Good morning everybody and welcome back to Visit File Coast. I thought we'd start this video this morning at the side of North Pier with a shot of Blackpool Tower and, and, and there you go, a tram appeared just right on time. And there's a little bit of brightness you can see at the back of these fluffy grey clouds which, which kind of set the scene for today. This is filmed on the 1st of February. And Blackpool, although deathly quiet because of coronavirus, is actually a hive of activity. There's work going on all over the place. There's scaffolding everywhere you turn. There's some there, some more there. The uh, Woolworths building is covered in scaffolding. You can just see in the distance. And this video is about Talbot Square. So all the work and all the development and all the scaffolding is kind of appropriate because of course the town's motto is progress and there's plenty of progress going on at the minute and it kind of, well this was one of the places where a lot of it started. So we're going to take a look around Talbot Square. I know we've seen some of these buildings individually but we're going to go and take a look around sort of in more detail and see see just how Blackpool did begin on this corner. Now this is the old Clifton Hotel currently known as the Ibis. Now last year you might remember me getting all excited because I thought that they were going to rest, um, restore it back to the brick and they've not, they've, they've re-rendered re it which is a shame but nonetheless it will look it will look super duper marvellous and did you know that the Clifton Hotel dates back as far as 1750? <coughs> it was built in 1780 and it's a Grade 2 listed building. In 1865, let's just wait for this lorry. <laughs> in 1865, it was partly demolished and then rebuilt by John Talbot Clifton and opened in 1874. So there you have it. That is one of the... I knew it was one of the oldest buildings in Blackpool, but I didn't realise it was quite so old. And you can see that they've done the, the downstairs bit of it. Let me just cross here before the lights change. And then we can have a proper look. So you can see they've done this down, so downstairs bit here, she says, stepping, stepping off the curb. So that's going to look marvellous when it's finished. And here comes the siren. I knew there'd be one. <laughs> There's always one. There's always one when you do a video in Blackpool. Right, anyway, we just got to the Clifton when I was, I was interrupted by somebody shouting, bunny, 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 coming down the promenade. I thought it was a drunk and then I realised he was shouting me. So this is the Clifton and we've gone back to John Talbot Clifton in 1874. So the next lovely building, I think in fact the, the bells were just chiming, as Quasimodo would have said, the bells, the bells, were just chiming for 11 o'clock on the top of the town hall building which is our next, our next stop. And I'm going to stand here in the middle of, you can see now why I'm doing this in lockdown when there's not as many people about and there's not as much traffic as I tiptoe my way from one traffic island to another. So the town hall was completed in 1900 and that is actually a grade two listed building. And it was listed on the 11th of January, 1974. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in Blackpool Town Hall. I'm just going to pop across to this traffic island. And then we can have a proper look at it from the front. But they do open it on Heritage Open Days in September each year. And if you get the opportunity to go in next time there is one, I really would recommend that you go and take a look because it's absolutely full of all the original features. Now the only problem with Blackpool Town Hall is that the sun, the light, comes round that way, so it's it, round this way to the west, so it's always got the sun at the back of it. So getting it in the, 
getting it in the light to take a proper look at that lovely building is a little bit of a challenge and that building at the back there that is the extension to the original town hall building now what i didn't know is that this lovely building replaces an 18th century one which was near st john's market <clears throat> so there you go we didn't know that did we and there is a blue plaque on the front of the town hall so we'll take a portal across there and we'll go and have a look at that and see see what it says on the plaque what's the traffic don't want to get knocked down do we i've already tripped up once this morning we don't need to don't need to trip up again <coughs> Right, so there's a blue Blackpool Civic Trust plaque here, which says Heritage Trail. Built on the site of the former town hall demolished in 1895, it was completed in 1900. Designed by Potts, Son and Hemmings, built in Jacobean style brick, faced with Yorkshire stone, and originally topped with a spire and a weather vane. These were taken down in 1966 on the grounds of structural safety. Comprehensive restoration took place in 1985-86 and the building now stands as the focal point of the surrounding conservation area. That's interesting. And then it's got a plaque here of all the mayors. So we've got William Henry Cocker, who is a name that any Blackpool historians will recognise. And this kind of gives you, this, this um, porch kind of gives you a feeling of what the inside of the building's like. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like Paul Board, Leighton with Warbreck, constituted 1851. Charter of Incorporation, granted 1876. <laughs> Goodness. Love these old buildings. Right, so that's Blackpool Town Hall. Um, and this then is the Premier Inn and this as you will know because we've done we've done videos about this before when it's been built is the new hotel that was built on the site of Yates's which burned down some years ago and there is another video about the um, Yates's hotel being built and the, the, the work done here and um, photos of the site as it's been developed on our Live Blackpool website so I'll put the link to that in the description below and then you can you can take a look now you've probably noticed that there are two little tram benches in Talbot Square you can't see them here but we're going to go around in a minute and have a look and they're just down there and they're in celebration of the tram history of Blackpool and in fact this this very spot in in that long history and there's a, a new tramway laid here this is talbot road that goes up to the railway station and um what's going to be the new tramway interchange so you can see the lines that have been the new tracks that have been installed in the road and they they stop there for the time being and that's because the tramway extension is still in development. The, the rails have been laid and that's all ready to, to rock and roll. Um, all we need now is the, the tram interchange building at the top of Talbot Road. Um, but in, back in the day, there was an old Leighton route that ran up here, up Clifton Street and round Abingdon Street to the front of Church Street and the front of the Winter Gardens. Amazing, amazing what you see when, when you know where to look. And in fact, when they were doing the work for the, the tram rails, um, they actually kept digging up bits of old tramway that were still embedded underneath the floor. So um, that's quite a, a big, exciting project and it's it's one of the dominoes that's, that's all lined up, ready to, ready to give Blackpool a whole new lease of life. So these are the tram benches and these were installed in November 2020. And they were designed by an artist called Andy Hazel. 
and there are another two of these which are going to be installed at the top of Talbot Road when the work up there is finished. So one is a one is a brush tram and one is a, from um, that's based on a 1937 design and this is a OMO from the 1970s. Now I didn't know what OMO stood for. I thought what on earth is that? Um, the only the nearest I know to that is OMD, which were a, a, a group in the 1980s. But what OMO apparently means one man operated. So there you go. So there's also going to be a mermaid installed here. Now I'm not sure exactly where Mrs. Mermaid is going. I did see somebody one day when I was when I was out here looking looking around as if they were doing something surveying-ish. Um, so I, 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 I've not actually, I've not actually kind of found out exactly where she's going, but somewhere, somewhere in Talbot Square. And the mermaid is gonna mark the importance of the coast and our coastal environment and, and how important our natural, natural world is and the sea and all that kind of thing. So that's based on a 3D scan of a, a girl called Charlotte. So that'd be, that'd be interesting when it turns up, when we can have a look at that. Now where I'm standing at the moment, if you're as, as long in the tooth as I am, you might remember that this used to be pretty much, I would say, the access point for the underground toilets. Um, now I can understand that underground toilets are probably a magnet for antisocial behaviour in today's day and age when people are like they are. But when I used to use the underground toilets, they're always spotlessly clean. They're proper Victorian white enamel and brown mahogany doors. Um, lovely, lovely, um, lovely public building, but they were they were closed some years ago, and I don't I don't know whether they've actually been filled in. Um, but certainly, right at the moment, as we are speaking they're filling in another block of underground toilets in a subway opposite Central Pier. So if I turn round one of our one of our last parts of call on this video is the counting house. And I didn't realise that that was as old as it is either. And I guess with a name like the counting house, it's pretty obvious really when you think about it what it might have been. But it was first opened in 1863 by the Preston Banking Company. And then in 1891, it was rebuilt as the London and Midland Bank. And in 1956, it was extended. Now I'm wondering if that's the bit on the end there that was the extension. Because when you look at that bit, it doesn't look exactly the same colour as this down here. Or is it, is it a bit more there? because it, it looks it looks a slightly different colour. Um, it's a damn good join if that is where they joined it on. So that, the, the pub opened, the, the counting house pub opened in 1992 and the banking hall is the public bar. I always think it's a nice building that. It looks as if it wants some renovation and some looking after. So the Blackpool tramway, you'll have noticed a few trams trundling past as we've been standing here and that opened in 2012 after a 101 million pound upgrade so that's another part of the the Blackpool improvement jigsaw so right to go back to the very beginning of this story um, and to, to, to Talbot Square and, and Clifton Square as you might know it Thomas Clifton, the Squire of Lytham, bought a large piece of land in December 1843, which was later to become Talbot Square. So this little plot dates right back to then, and it was named after his son. And they built a road from their Leighton Hall estate to the seafront, which was Talbot Street, this one, And then it was changed to New Road, and in 1924 changed to Talbot Road. So that's your potted history of Talbot Square and some of the, the buildings that, 
that are um, to be found here. So if you've got any questions or any comments, I'll pop the links to the articles and the, the information that we've talked about in the description below. If you've got any questions or any comments, pop them, pop them underneath and we'll do our best to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe to the Visit File Course YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. And we'll see you next time. See you later. Bye.